Hello, this is Brad Deverson from Falling Cats Consulting. This video is an introduction to Gantt Project, which is free project management software. If you've used Microsoft Project before, it will look familiar, but this video presumes no previous knowledge of any project management software. Before we get going, let's talk about people, software, and projects. You can be an excellent project manager without using any software. You can be an expert at project management software, but a useless project manager. And you can be an excellent project manager and a genius with the software, but your project can still go to pieces. Just to be clear, this is just about Gantt project software. There are some terms that need to be defined before we dive into the software, so let's get that sorted. A project is temporary in that it has a defined beginning and end in time, and therefore defines scope and resources. And a project is unique in that it is not a routine operation, but a specific set of operations designed to accomplish a singular goal. A task is a distinct activity that needs to be accomplished within a defined period of time or by a deadline. A project is made up of a set of tasks. Resources are required to carry out the project tasks. Resources are usually people, but they can be things like equipment, facilities, or anything else capable of definition required for the project. Dependencies are the relationships of the preceding tasks to the succeeding tasks. Tasks may have multiple preceding tasks and or multiple succeeding tasks. The most common dependency relationship is a finish to start relationship. In this case, task 3 can't start until task 1 is finished. Also, task 4 can't start until task 2 has finished. And task 5 can't start until both task 3 and 4 are done. By the way, we've actually created a very simple Gantt chart. A bunch of tasks making up a project. We're missing a few bits and pieces, but effectively a Gantt chart is a portrayal of a project made up of the tasks needed to complete the project. A constraint is any restriction that defines a project's limitations. Examples are the time a task is expected to take. Another is public holidays where no one will be working. Now we have the definitions done, let's look at our example project. Bob owns a cafe in Sydney, Australia and has a boring blank outside wall. He wants a big mural of a jungle scene on the wall to attract custom. He's engaged his designer friend Jill to get the job done. Bob returns from leave on the 22nd of January 2019 and he wants the project to start on Wednesday the 23rd of January 2019. Let's look at the resources and roles. Bob is a customer. Jill is the designer and project manager. In other words, she gets to choose who works on the project and manages the project as well. She's chosen Fred and Mary who are artists and also Sam who is a labourer. The project has two constraints at this stage. Australia Day is a national holiday on Monday the 28th of January and Bob wants the project to start on Wednesday the 23rd of January. Jill has made a rough list of the tasks and dependencies to this point. First of all, Bob and Jill will chat about the design for the mural. Jill will then draw up the ideas. Bob and Jill will review those ideas and decide on the best one. Sam needs to clean the wall. Fred and Mary paint the wall. Everyone except Sam checks out the mural. There might be some last minute touches up and Sam cleans up all the mess. Okay, let's get on to the software, Gantt Project. We're looking at the Pilsen build. I checked out earlier versions of Gantt Project and they weren't really up to scratch, but I'm quite happy with this build. Go to the website shown and download the project. I'm using Windows 10 for this example. Once it's downloaded, you'll get a directory structure as shown here. To launch the software, create a shortcut to gantproject.bat. When you start Gantt Project, this is the screen you'll see. Let's get started on our project. First, some settings we want for all the projects we create. Adjust the application UI settings to suit you. Next, set the Gantt chart settings to suit you. The only change I would make is as indicated, which will show the task's resources to the left of the task on the Gantt chart. Now we'll create our project. Give it a name and a brief description, then click OK. Next, we need to save the project. Gantt Project does not save automatically, so don't forget to save your work as you go. Now it's time to add the project constraint. In this case, it's the Australia Day public holiday. Don't worry about the start date. That gets set once we've created our first task. The start date on this screen is to manage the situation where your original start date changes. 
Next, we can add the resource roles. This is useful to document the role you give each resource later. And now we'll add our resources themselves. In the example, we're adding Bob, whose role is customer. Note the standard rate field at the bottom. In this build, it's only used to show the cost of a specific task. There's nowhere that shows the total calculated project cost, but that might come in a later build. The resources chart tab shows the five resources I just added along with their roles. The red line on the 28th represents the public holiday we set up before. Okay, now we can add our first task. The menu option adds a generic task, as you can see. We can then go into the task properties to set up the task details. Here we're adding the first task, which is the design meeting between Bob and Jill. Because it's the first task, we will give it a begin date and it will have no predecessors. We're also leaving the default duration as one day, although you can use percentages of days if you need to. In the task resources tab, I've added Bob and Jill. Note that Jill is marked as the coordinator. This shows her in curly brackets in the Gantt chart, but you don't have to do that. Also note we have left the default unit as 100%, which means they're working the whole day on the task. You can use smaller percentages if you need to. So here is the Gantt chart with our first task. See how Jill is marked as the coordinator of the task? By right clicking on the columns, we can manage them. We'll hide the end date. You can also make the columns bigger or smaller by dragging. We're now going to add the next task, which is the mural design done by just Jill. We'll give her two days for this. Don't change the begin date on this screen as it's dependent on the previous task finishing. Let's now move to the predecessors tab for the task. We need to make this task dependent on the mural design meeting finishing. If that takes longer, then the design task will be pushed out. Finally, we need to add the resources for the design task. In this case, it's just Jill. Back on the Gantt chart, we can see our first two tasks. The arrow pointing from the end of the first task to the start of the next shows that they're dependent. So if the meeting takes two days instead of one, the design task will be pushed out automatically without us having to fiddle with the dates. Awesome. Okay, all the tasks, resources, and dependencies have now been added. Note how the public holiday has been taken into account. That's great. From a process point of view, this needs to be reviewed with all the team members to ensure they're free and that they agree with the estimates. Otherwise, it's no point holding them to them. But can you see a way of making the project two days shorter? I'll leave you to think about that for a second. Why are we waiting until the mural has been designed to clean the wall? Sure, there's a risk that Bob might cancel the whole project, but at least he'll have a clean wall. So we edited clean wall to start on the 23rd of the 1st and have no dependencies, but then we had to make paint mural dependent on the design and the clean. On the top right of the Gantt chart screen are some options. Click the show critical path to see what tasks will affect the finish date. Note that Sam's task is not critical. He could take another day without causing a delay, but the delay in any other task will delay the project. Once the project starts, the project manager needs to update the task progress percentage daily after consulting with the resources working on each task. In this case, we've done 50% of the wall cleaning. See how the Gantt chart shows this as a horizontal line. Obviously, if we're at the end of the planned task, but it's not finished, it's time to start juggling or managing expectations. If we're lucky enough to finish early, we can also see if we can start other tasks earlier. A milestone is a way of signaling the end of a phase of a project. Add a final task called finished and check milestone. Make the predecessor the cleanup task. No need for anything else. See how it's shown on the Gantt chart as a diamond. The first task in the next phase would be dependent on that milestone. A PERT chart is another view of the project. Notice a critical path in yellow. Also notice that in this build of Gantt project, the PERT chart doesn't print. It has some horrible error, but anyway, we can manage without that. Here's the resource chart, which is now giving us a resource centric view of the project. If a task is running late, you can see if there are free resources who could pitch in. Also notice on the left that the display is a little bit wobbly. I'm not sure if that's this build or my PC or Windows 10 or some other horror, but anyway, we can sort of read it. A new task has been added called Overload Sam. It's scheduled for one day starting on the 5th of February and has been assigned to Sam. There's no indication of a problem on the Gantt chart, but the resources chart shows Sam in red on the 5th, meaning he's been assigned to do two days work on one day. That's not gonna happen. 
At the top right of the Gantt chart is a baselines option. At the beginning of the project and other points, you can freeze the plan as a baseline. This lets you compare the real timing with your initial plan. Oh, the horror. The utility of this is debatable, so I'll leave it with you to work out if you want. It's quite simple. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful. I know I said this was about software, but some thoughts to finish with. Please, please, please use project plans collaboratively and not to beat people over the head with. There can only be one project manager in charge of a project. If other people pressure you, then walk away. If your superiors steal resources, despite them being scheduled to your project, escalate it to the project sponsor. It's their problem, not yours. Anyway, enjoy.